If you follow SoFi stock as often as I do, you've probably heard of a name called Bender9000. This is a very avid poster on Reddit who likes to post about SoFi stock and other stocks in general, but specifically SoFi stock for the case of this video. He does such deep research that people actually predict that he's an insider of the company or even some crazy predictions that he's Noto himself. Now, I don't go as far as to think either of those things. He's come out and said that he is not an insider, whether or not you want to believe that. But what we can say is that he makes a lot of predictions on SoFi stock and a lot of them come true. Take, for example, his last year's 22 predictions for 2022. Okay, where whenever you actually go through it and compare it to the year that we just had, he was right 68% of the time on all of his future predictions for SoFi stock. Meaning that whenever Bender 9000 talks, I listen. So obviously coming up to 2023, Bender 9000 just posted his 23 predictions for 2023. But that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. But before I get started, I just want to say, Bender, if you're watching this video yourself, I really appreciate you and everything that you do for the community. Thank you so much, but let's dive into this. But now diving right into this, let's go up to number one, which is the big wins for tech platforms. Now, this is one that I've been absolutely talking about for a long time. Now, SoFi is courting a rich pipeline of tech platform interest from large financial institutions. Once a couple of big firms sign, it'll provide confidence for a couple of other institutions potentially starting a flood of tech platform adoption. Now, he even took out some quotes from CEO Noto, Anthony Noto, where he's talking about, in terms of big wins, the pipeline is pretty rich. We hope to have some wins that we can go into to share with investors. That was back in September, okay? He also goes on to say, I think we're in pole position to win those big financial institutions or big bank deals but it's really going to come down to when they decide to make the transition. Even CEFO uh, Chris Lapointe said the exact same thing on his, you know, conference call fireside chat that he had in November 30th, where he even said, you know, we're in massive talks with big financial institutions and consumer uh, platforms. So that could be massive adoption if that's actually true, but I'm not going to hold my breath for this. I really want to actually see some real deals signed. You can be in conversations with everyone and they can all be blowing you off, right? So you got to make sure that you're actually closing these deals. Going on to number two to Galileo's products, Galileo is rolling out new products and partnerships. Recent launches included Direct Deposit Switch, Pay In For, Fleet Cards, Dispute APIs, and Enhance the Payment Risk Platform. Upcoming products could include payments, or sorry, rewards, credit card programs, lantern style referrals, and loans, big loans. Okay, so first of all, guys, if these come true, if Bender 9000 hits this correctly, rewards is going to be a massive, massive category for uh, Galileo. Credit card program is going to be extremely huge. Lantern style referrals is one that people look over a lot. But if you actually look into the way that we make money on like our investing platform, referrals is the number one, you know, actual breakdown of how we make our money through SoFi Invest. So super, super exciting. And then obviously loans, that's where we make the bulk of all of our money. If we can offer that to a customer like Robinhood, we could see some massive growth just through the actual adoption of products like this. Every single one of these products are going to be absolutely huge, and it'll be really, really exciting if they can release these over the next 12 months. Now onto their lending segment. SoFi writes their own loans, right? And they match additional loans with different partners. But back in September, Noto even said that he's looking for additional partners so they can run three or four different en or underwriting engines to try to get the best risk reward out of every single loan that we write. This could have massive upside on our bottom line for our lending segment, which makes up 70% of our overall income. I should really say revenue. We don't have any income. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is one of those increases that is not quite flashy, and people don't get really excited about this, but if this can help our, you know, decrease our loan losses per loan, then this could really be something that Wall Street looks at as a great upgrade for our actual fundamentals. So it's almost like a sleeper upgrade that people want, that hopefully whenever this rolls out, that we could actually see some better fundamentals come in through the business, and then that'll obviously increase the stock price if the stock actually gets a little bit better on the actual bottom line. Now, this next one is SoFi's broker deposits, which he says in Q3 of 2022 was the first quarter that SoFi broke out their, you know, broker deposit segment, showing a $600 million share of SoFi's bank deposits. This included flows from brokered CD offerings and participation in sweep programs. He believes that in SoFi's brokered uh, deposit funding channels is primed for growth. 
Now, I remember looking into this whenever it happened back in Q3, and I mean, it's great that we got the money off of our balance sheet, so then we could go shopping for new loans, you know, or, or well, to fund new loans going into the future, but I don't know how he understands that it's primed for growth going forward. So maybe that's just because we weren't a bank before, and now we are, so then that's technically primed for growth, or if there's actually, you know, a competitive advantage that SoFi has versus the competitors. It'd be really interesting to see if Bender actually has a comment to that, but let's move on to the next one. Next, we have retail CDs, which is a certificate of deposits. Now, if you're actually here in Canada, it's actually called a GIC or a Guaranteed Investment Certificate, but it's the exact same product. Bender 9000 believes that because the brokered CD product was so popular, that obviously it's going to be popular with retail investors as well, considering of how volatile the markets are these days. And like he says here, members are interested, so look for SoFi to directly offer retail CDs. I mean, they give their members exactly what they want, and so obviously we're expecting that this year. Just jumping right into the next one, new B2C markets. In the past year, saw securities license approved for SoFi Singapore and public career posts for SoFi UAE, or United Arab Emirates. Tease this coming soon back in 2001. Will 2023 be the year that they launch? Now, from what I looked up, SoFi Singapore seems to be the definite next stop for SoFi, and because we actually got those licenses. SoFi UAE has been quiet on that front as far as I could see, and that there's been no real news that I could find, you know, but I also don't have that research skill that, you know, Bender has. But SoFi Singapore definitely seems to be on the roadmap, and hopefully that'll come this year. Next, we have SoFi Bank as a sponsor. Now, sometimes I believe that Bender actually watches my videos, and nothing shows that more than actually seeing one like this, because I've been pushing this like crazy. All this means is that tech platform clients that don't have bank charters will need to find partnering banks to actually, you know, hold their money for them, so then it's FDIC insured. Now, SoFi Bank can do this. However, in 2022, we saw zero deals that actually were public that we could see that SoFi was the actual sponsoring bank. So hopefully in 2023, this becomes way more widespread whenever we have clients through Galileo and Technosys. Now this one I definitely think he's so right on, okay? SoFi Travel and other spend better shopping, shopping portals. This definitely seems to be what they're actually pushing now is just making a better customer experience and just a little bit easier in these smaller financial products going forward, considering that we have all the big names out already. CEO Noto has already toted the coming of SoFi Travel Shopping Portal, as well as a new insurance portal that he's actually rolling out, as well as just a general slash retail portal for a spend better product that allows us to get better cashbacks across all the different products from local stores that we might have around us. Now, like I said before, this is not to increase revenue. This is a very, very small products, but it does increase the amount of times that people come back onto the platform. Now, the more times that you're actually on the platform, the more chances that you actually have to, you know, getting cross-sold onto a credit card or a loan or somewhere we remake more of the money at, you know, being SoFi shareholders. <laughs> but next we have tech platform marketplaces. The Galileo Plus Technesis tech platform supports third-party products. Clients can build their own products, purchase tech platform products, and utilize third-party products. For example, third-party products includes analytics, image processing, messaging, and fraud screening. Now, a bunch of these as well, you're, you're talking about, you know, drop boxes in the in the docu signs and twilios and just very easy products that are also built into a lot of these third party marketplaces that you can also build in directly with technesis but bender 9000 is just saying that look for tech platform marketplaces to expand opportunities include underwriting models lending platforms think pagaya and marketing platforms so very very exciting and that also brings a lot more interest to our actual underlining or underlying AWS a fintech, which is really the base of it is, you know, technesis. Now for the next one, he says options trading expansion. Now what he's talking about is the initial rollout of level two is here. This is the calls and puts. Level one is coming, which is the more advanced options trading that we're actually looking for, which I had I had said that, you know, people are actually saying that it's going to release in January. Seems early now that it's actually, you know, practically here, but who knows? Maybe the same rumors that said it was back in November are the same people that got it right here in January. So hopefully, fingers are crossed, but it could be any time. Oh, but it is definitely coming, by the way, because the official, you know, SoFi Twitter account has actually said that that's coming next. Next, we have the home loan acquisition, okay? This is definitely something that Chris Lapointe had brought up in his own, or his most recent, you know, November fireside chat, but he says, SoFi is shopping to vertically integrate home loans, and mortgage firms are on sale look for acquisitions. Now, the only thing I want to say with this is that yes, he's right in the fact that they are depressed in the in markets as well, but so is SoFi. 
So if it's an all stock deal the same way that Technesis was, then this could also hurt, hurt SoFi, SoFi investors going forward. And I mean, if it's an all cash deal, that still isn't that great, considering that's our survivability right now, considering we're not profitable. And if we go into a downturn during this time, that is really, you know, the only thing that's keeping us afloat, considering that's our survivability, right? So, you know, both ways, it's something that we need because our home loans just aren't working and our partners are not executing the way that we want them to. But also very expensive time to buy. However, you know, the assets are cheap. So it's kind of Although they are down, so are we. So it kind of, you know, balances out. Let's just get both of these out at the same time. Twitter feed integration into SoFi Invest, as well as student loans. Student loans, he's got no clue, neither do I. We're just going to have to see how that unfolds. But let's look back at the uh, Twitter feed one. So he says, SoFi tested the inclusion of Twitter feeds into SoFi Invest. Since then, Twitter has revamped their uh, verified account logic, making a SoFi Invest integration more feasible. This was before CEO Noto actually tweeted a possible reimbursement for Twitter Blue. Look for SoFi to bring tweets inside the invest platform and or a free Twitter Blue promotion with SoFi checking and savings. I've said this a couple times, hate me, don't hate me, I don't care, okay? I do not care about the SoFi Invest social platform. I don't think it adds anything to the stock. Maybe I'm too analytical and fundamental to actually think that a social platform on a non-social media platform is gonna do anything different for the stock in general. Yahoo Finance has a comment section as well and no one uses it. Like, you know what I mean? Not everything needs to have a social platform. Most of the time people go to their social media sites like Twitter to talk about SoFi. You don't need to talk about it right directly inside the app where you're buying your stocks. And while I'm just being a little bit negative here, Twitter actually upgraded their cash tags that they have on their platform. And where, whenever you actually look at the cash tags, depending on the certain ticker symbol, you can actually see that you can go directly into that ticker symbol and purchase that stock via Robinhood. Meaning that there's been a very quiet setup partnership between Twitter and Robinhood, and yet SoFi could have been able to actually close that out considering we have a full-fledged brokerage as well. Now, I would have thought that we would have gotten a partnership like this considering the ties to Twitter and Anthony Noto, but but obviously that doesn't seem to be happening. You know, Robin Hood was able to clutch that out. So that makes me further believe that we're going to get any future Twitter, you know, sort of uh, partnerships going forward, including the one that I hope by far is the, you know, my most excited for. And that's the idea that if Twitter actually does get into the payment networks arena or, or you know, into that space, that, tw that you know, Noto will actually be able to sell our Technesis and Galileo or the AWS of FinTech platform to Twitter going forward. Now, considering the fact that we don't even have the cash tags, I don't believe that that's gonna be going forward. So it just sort of even further minimizes this idea that there's gonna be any sort of partnership or integration, but that's just me. Another great prediction here from Bender. Okay, what he says here is a strategic partnership. Okay, wild speculation. Potential strategic partnership by one of the large financial institutions that SoFi will eventually sign on to their tech platform. He's just speculating here, but he says incumbent banks have a pattern of investing in the infrastructure partners that they actually sign with. A large firm committing to a new tech, st a new tech stack may wish to own some of their upside. So SoFi is currently trading at multiple year lows below past private valuations, which have predated Galileo and Technosys. Seems like a great opportunity for a big bank that might like to upgrade their infrastructure to SoFi's tech platform, not investment advice, okay? But this is absolutely in the cards of happening considering this has happened so many times in the past. Very, very common. Not only does this happen in the finance sector, this happens like in you know the tech sector across the board. People like to invest in the actual vertical integration that they're working with. I mean, if you love the product so much that you want to use it yourself, you are betting that other people are going to like that product as well and you want some upside. Makes total sense. Next, we have credit cards. Members have requested niche cards, okay? SoFi is inter interested in travel and have surveyed members. There are countless partnership opportunities. Look for expansion of SoFi's credit cards. Now, I've always said this, premium credit cards are going to be the next big thing for SoFi. It's such a lucrative business. You see so many credit card companies doing absolutely amazing numbers. And I mean, we have so much room to grow there. So going to be very, very exciting. Like I said, I've said this in past videos as well, a travel credit card is so obvious. It fits right into our business, especially if we are coming out with a travel product as well. So look for that, like like Noto, or sorry, like Bender said, or maybe some people will call him Noto, but let's jump into Zell here, okay? A top member request confirmed in the pipeline. Absolutely. It's everything that what I've been seeing as well. People want this. And now, you know, some people may say that there might be 
fraud with Zelle or, or that maybe fraud detection is not that great or that maybe some people might not like it or whatever. But it is still with all the big banks. And whenever people are transferring from these big banks and they're used to those payment networks, like all their friends, they always pay them through Zelle, okay? You're not going to want to change that out. If you use Zelle, you want to continue to use the products that you're used to use, using. And making that switch to SoFi can turn people away if they have to change up the way that they do their day-to-day -day business. Next, he says, Technicist website, Galileo received a makeup. So obviously, next up, Technicist. This is probably going to happen, okay? And finance-wise, like for the actual stock, it's not going to mean a thing it, because, you know, it's a it's a website revamp of a B2B, you know, company. No one cares. But being a deep diver of the company, learning everything I possibly can about SoFi, Galileo, Technicist, it is going to show us a lot of insights and partnerships that maybe we didn't even know existed before. Like whenever Galileo revamped their website, we learned so much about different partnerships and different products that they had that we just never knew existed before. So in that sense, I'm excited for the update, but on a stock basis, I mean, it's really not much. SoFi tax filing. Taxes are on the roadmap, but the ETA is unknown. Could be a viable partnership, white label, or SoFi owned, okay? I'm sure it's gonna start out as some, you know, partnership or white label product because that's what SoFi has been doing a lot lately, like you've been seeing with the, you know, investment products. But this could also be a completely built out SoFi product as well. And that's going to be amazing considering if we want to be a one stop shop, we have to have the tax filing. It's definitely something that if you know, if you have your loans with SoFi credit card, you know, your invest products, checking and savings, that's going to be the obvious place that you're going to file your taxes. If you have a regular, you know, nine to five job and you, you know, your taxes aren't that complicated. Automated investing still in its initial iteration and full of potential. Look for SoFi uh, automated investing to expand. Take it from a financial advisor, okay? During 2022 and 2021, everyone thought they could outsmart the market and they were perfect to do the stock picking on their own because everything was winning, okay? So they didn't want to talk with professionals or have anything that was indexed or professionally managed. Now, whenever you actually look into 2022, when the markets are falling, people like to correct it and they pick up the phone and they call me, okay? Now you have people that are actually wanting managed funds. They're wanting things that are actually able to get, you know, professionally managed because it's not going down as much. The truth is, is that professionals are just much more calm than retail investors. And so they just don't freak out during downturns most of the time. And automated investing can do that amazingly. So if they can bring out a bunch of new features, a time like this, when the market is down, can lead to a bunch more potential for people actually, you know, going over to that platform while the market is down though, especially. Okay, next, security income program. Long offered by SoFi Hong Kong, look for a stock lending revenue share program for active investors. Now, this is very similar to uh, Robinhood's, you know, revenue share, where really they're just allowing you to have, you know, options contracts for your, you know, your shares, but without having, you know, any sort of lockups or, you know, a hundred share minimum or anything along these lines. So the ability to actually get a little dividend out of all your stocks and have no restrictions on it is a great ad, you know, for regular investors, especially if one competitor has that and we don't, then it's definitely something that we're going to want to get because it might be the reason why someone doesn't come over from Robinhood because maybe they love that dividend on their growth stocks. SoFi ETFs. SoFi launched two new ETFs over the past year, including taking over the SoFi Smart Energy ETF. Inflows remain strong despite 2022's market decline. Look for more SoFi ETF advancements. I don't care too much about this because we don't even really take a management expense fee for our ETFs and non-member, you know, people can also participate in these ETFs as well. So I really don't care about this advancement. It's good for members, but it's also costly and we have zero to benefit from it. So, I mean, it's just the Costco chicken to get people through the door and they don't even need to come through the door to get it. So whatever. Now there's two left, one of them being absolutely amazing and another one that is obvious, but yet we have to say it because it's so important for SoFi investors going forward. One, access to private non-traded investments, okay? Not only has Blackstone recently uh, built integration capabilities for online brokers, okay? ARK entered the space and popular non-traded funds outperformed publicly, uh, public markets in 2022. Even, you know, investment platforms that we have here in Canada, like Wealthsimple, also offer venture funds that are able to, you know, invest in private equity 
inside of publicly traded funds. So that's super exciting. Very much a, a, a more modern advancement in you know investing for, for retail investors. And it's also great because you can have access, like he says here, to private REITs, you know, private credit and venture funds. So that's that would be absolutely amazing. And uh, you know, something that a lot of investors could really enjoy and you know help with a little bit of diversification. If SoFi wants to continue to innovate, this is absolutely the next space that they should actually branch out into. And it's becoming more popular every single day, especially Especially like what Bender 9000 actually said, private markets are actually outperforming public markets lately. People want that trend to continue. So give retail investors access to that. Not only if, if that actually becomes popular, will they outperform, you know, public markets going forward, but it'll also increase the actual multiples on, you know, private equity because more inflows will actually be headed there. So it'll actually increase the increase of, you know, the outperformance on, uh, you know, private equity. Very, very exciting. And lastly, like I said, this one is super important. But SoFi is building future of finance. Expect surprises, okay? And that goes so true for SoFi across the board. Like his exact predictions from last year, he said, expect surprises, and boom, we bought Technesis. Who could have ever expected it? It wasn't on his roadmap, and a lot of the things that he actually got right, but they just you can't expect them to buy such an amazing business or something like this or build out something that is just simply, you know, unforeseen. But I mean, that's all from that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you could like the video and subscribe down below if you want to see more financial content just like this.